Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Lisa with Lisa Cape and Quilts. One of the reasons you might have subscribed to my channel, or if you haven't yet, you might want to, is t-shirt quilts. Uh, I am a huge fan and love making t-shirt quilts, and I've made several, several t-shirt quilt videos here on my channel, and you might have found me that way. Well, it's been a while since I made a t-shirt quilt, uh, video. I've made lots of t-shirt quilts since then, but uh, I thought I would bring you along in sort of a vlog type of series because today I am starting a new quilt for a client. Really, she is a good friend and a fellow creator, artist, and uh, her work inspires me so much. I have been excited to make this quilt for over a year now. She has been in my books for March for over a year, and finally I get to start her quilt, and I thought it would be really fun to document the process, not only for her, but for you, so that you could follow along. I get to do some really fun stuff with her quilt. We're gonna be making a collage style quilt, blocks all different sizes to really uh, feature her shirts and in the empty spaces she's given me the creative liberties to do all kinds of fun stuff like some applique applique <laughs> uh, some pictures and uh, who knows what else so I hope you follow along in this series now here's the thing today I'm going to just quickly walk you through the process of going through her shirts now this is not the first step of making a t-shirt quilt the very first step is meeting with your client or the person you're making their quilt for and going through their shirts. You want to take really good notes and make sure you document all kinds of stuff. What shirts are their favorites? Which ones go in the middle of the quilt if they have a preference? What colors do they want to use if you're adding fabric to the quilt? Like sashing and borders. What color do they want the back? Uh... You might even want to ask them, do they have a color preference for the binding? You want to take all kinds of notes, right? You want to know, are there parts of the shirts that they don't want in the quilt? You want to talk about extras. Do they want photos? Do they want applique? Uh, I've even done some heat transfer vinyl decals to fill in spaces. And I've done some screen printing to fill in some spaces. So there's all these things that you can go over with your client before you even get started. Sorry, I'm getting a phone call. It's probably a <laughs> to update my uh, auto insurance. <laughs> We're going to ignore that. Hopefully it doesn't mess up the video. Uh, but yeah, you want to go over all of that. So that's really the first step and that's already been done. I took some really good notes and I'm going to have them close to me as I'm sorting through her shirts. Now in this video, I am using my t-shirt qu quilt planner. I'm going to link this down in the description box below. You can find this on Etsy. Uh, and I'm not going to really go into a lot of details on how to use this because guess what? I already have a video on that. So uh, if you haven't seen that video and you want to check it out, here is what the video looks like, the thumbnail, and I'm going to link that down in the description box. Really helps you stay organized and uh, everything is documented, a full inventory of the shirts. So that's what we're doing today right and uh so you can check out that i'm also going to link this video right here which is an even older video uh if you want to make a t-shirt quilt with different size blocks and you haven't done that before you might want to check out this series that i did uh walking you through the whole process we're going to be skipping around in this video series about this quilt uh, because I've already taught on all of this, but this will be a re refresher and uh, it might inspire you to get creative with your quilts because we're going to be doing some fun stuff. And for those parts of this quilt process, I want to bring you along, right? Adding photos to your quilt top, uh, adding some applique to fill in empty spaces. Now, I do think uh, I will be using my two-inch quilt grid to plan this quilt. This is also in the description box. Uh, she didn't really have a size preference. We're working with uh, 22 shirts. 
even more logos because some have fronts and backs. I think we're going to be doing about a throw size, 52 by 72, based on the number of shirts. And after seeing and inventorying the sizes of the logos, I think we're going to be in the throw size, but we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I'm just going to bring you along today and let you hang out with me. The whole process from start to finish took about 43 minutes to go through 22 shirts and inventory them. And uh, this might be the first video you've watched of mine. So this might be the first time you're seeing this process. Again, check out a many, many playlist I have here on my channel. Let's get started. I'm going to move you over and share this process with you. So here we are, we have the stack of shirts and I have my planning set here. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and take some of the number tabs. I'm gonna cut myself about 30. We might have a few less. I might need to cut a few more. Little tags that we're going to actually pin to the shirt as we uh, measure the logos and inventory their sizes and color. So I'm just gonna cut myself 30 little tags and have those ready to go. It was such a nice day today. I have the windows open. Finally, I think the weather's starting to break here in Virginia. We'll see. <laughs> We've gotten some big snowstorms in March before. So this is my process and I show this in many t-shirt quilting videos, how to separate your shirts, the front from the back. We'll slow down just a little bit. This is the first shirt I'm inventorying. I'm just taking a rough estimate. I give myself about an inch above and below and on the sides of my logo. And I just record the smallest possible size that I want to cut this block. And at this point, I'm working with the whole shirt side. I'm not cutting anything at this point because we might want to make this block a little bit bigger to fill in some space of the quilt. I pin the uh, the little number at the bottom. It's got the measurement written in it. And I also record it on the two sheets with all the different color categories. All of the sides of the shirts that I'm working with that don't have any logos on them, uh, I'm saving because I can use those parts of shirts and even some of the sleeves from these shirts to fill in some empty spaces of this quilt, which is really fun. And you know that it's gonna go with the quilt because there's gonna be other blocks that are using the same shirts. So for each one of the shirt logos, it gets recorded in the right uh, category for the color. That kind of makes it nice when I'm planning with the, uh, the grid paper. How many blue shirts do I have? How many red shirts do I have? And I can sort of make sure that when I'm in the planning stages, I can separate those shirts on my grid so that I don't end up with two red blocks right next to each other. Now I'm gonna put on the screen a couple other videos that you might want to check out because like I said, I have taught on all of this before and you might've just missed it. Uh, I'm gonna be planning this quilt using my two inch quilt grid, the throw size in Inkscape. So uh, I'm gonna put this video in the playlist as well because uh, I'm not gonna show that process for this particular quilt. I'm gonna go ahead and plan everything and the next time we meet on this quilt, I will have a plan put together and we'll talk about it then. So as I'm going through, I'm referencing my notes. I know that the black shirt I'm cutting right now, I made a note. She wants to put this logo in the very center of her quilt. So that's why uh, it's really important to have those notes close to you to refresh your memory. Uh, I'm gonna make a little note on my planning set and I'm gonna highlight the little tag I'm pinning to this shirt. So that when I sit down at my computer and I'm working with where all of these shirts are going to go in her quilt, I don't forget. We're going to put this logo in the center of her quilt. 
Now, certainly you do not have to uh, plan your quilt on the computer. Uh, for me, it's just easier, but I do have videos and playlists where I actually print out the quilt grid and just use crayons or colored pencils to mark everything down right on the paper that the grid is printed on. So that is also super easy. So you'll see me here. I'm gonna just indicate, I'm gonna write myself a little note right on the planner sheet, right above the measurements for this logo that this is going in the center. And I do that for any other special notes, you know, some shirts um, you might have other special instructions for. I just take really good notes, not only when I'm talking with my client, but when I'm processing the shirts and inventorying them. And I'll make little indications right here on my quilt planner. So these little tabs, they're numbered. And so when I'm recording the shirt, I'll put that same number that got pinned to the shirt on the line for the measurements of that shirt. Now I do think, because I'm taking measurements that are the smallest possible number to cut this block, and I do think when I go to plan it, I will be adjusting those numbers. So I have my quilt planner right next to me, and if I change the measurements of these logos to make them bigger, then I will change it on my planner sheet as well. She has a lot of fun uh, shirts to look at. I think this will be a really interesting quilt to put together. Her favorite colors are purple and we're gonna be doing a border on this quilt. So um, I'm kind of leaning towards a purple, bo purple border. <laughs> we will see as we progress through this series and as the quilt top starts to come together I do know that uh, I'll be doing some applique hearts and flowers in some empty spaces. I'll be using some purple fabric. I think as far as shirts actually go, I think there's only one purple shirt that's gonna be included in this uh, quilt. So adding some purple fabric with some applique would sort of help tie in her favorite color if we do decide to use that as a border color. This shirt here is probably my favorite, the golden uh, color swatches on the shirt. That was really awesome to see that. So at this point, I have a big stack of shirt backs really that are completely blank. So that's extra fabric to work for the empty spaces. And uh, I did save a little stack. You can see off to the upper right, those are sleeves. Uh, that sometimes offer a good little patch of fabric as well, uh, especially for smaller places like four or five inch little blocks. Um, the, t the sleeves actually do come in handy sometimes. So now that we're done recording the shirts, we ended up having three extra tabs left over. So that means we have 27 logos we're going to be working with for this quilt. And I think we're going to have a lot of good space for some extra stuff, photos, flowers, and hearts. So here we are. We have uh, the stack of shirts here that uh, we're going to be cutting logos from. I had an extra shirt that we swapped out. This one may or may not get used. Uh, she included a sheet that she wanted to use as the back. So that's pretty awesome. I have a stack of uh, completely blank backs of shirts uh, that's gonna come in really handy for extra spaces in the quilt. And then of course the little sleeves 
which might come in handy here and there. We shall see. But here we go. That's the second part, really, of planning a t-shirt quilt. I'm going to sit down at the computer uh, next and start making a plan of laying out all of these blocks before I ever even touch that stack of shirts, right? We're going to make sure that uh, everything fits and see if we have to adjust those numbers at all. I just want to thank y'all for hanging out with me and uh, stay tuned. If you're subscribed, you'll get notified when I upload the next video for this series. And when we come back, we're going to have a plan in place for uh, putting this quilt together. And we're going to do some really fun stuff. So I'll see y'all soon. Bye, everybody.